Hey there, I'm Steve, and welcome to Jamson and Entertainment, and welcome to the conversation. Just before we get started, there are many ways you can help. You can like and subscribe so you never miss the conversation, but most importantly, please share this video. Get the word out there as a community we can talk about all things that we love. I recently just saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I didn't think I'd have a new favorite Marvel movie so soon. I mean, this is right after Thor Love and Thunder. The best way to describe this movie is epic. The movie opens up with T'Challa's passing and his funeral, and the first part of this movie, and I would say the central theme of this movie is Sorty dealing with loss. Her mother tries her best to help her grieve and move on with a ritual that they do, but Sorty, she needs to find her own way, and she definitely does find her own way throughout the movie. The plot of the movie is the world is upset with Wakanda for not being as forthcoming with Vibranium as they would like them to be. And the Queen reminds them just how much her and her family and country has gone through and what they have done for this planet and knows that there are probably nefarious people that would want to use vibranium for evil reasons. So she tells them off and tells them good luck finding vibranium anywhere else. At least the U.S. goes and does that. They find a huge pocket of vibranium in the ocean, which upsets the Submariners and introduces Ryan Coogler did it again, another very, very compelling villain. Because he's not really a villain. Villain. You understand where he's coming from. He's protecting his home that no one knows about, and he wants to keep it that way. The leader of the Submariners is Ku Ku Klan. Ku 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 Khan. Sorry. And at one point, he approaches the Queen of Wakanda and Shorty and asks for an alliance with them against the surface world because they are the two most powerful nations on the planet because of vibranium. And she declines because. One, he sneaks into Wakanda, breaking all the security barriers. He can travel through water. I don't know how all the water's connected. They don't explain it, but that's what I'm, I'm led to believe, and probably other moviegoers are led to believe, the fact that he can just appear in any body of water. So she doesn't trust him from the get-go, which is reasonable, because he doesn't come to her in, in a formal manner. He comes to her in a very informal manner, and can be seen as, and is, a very threatening manner. Just, like, I can come and go as I please. I'm not going to go into more detail than that. There are other characters that are introduced here, other characters that are brought back in, but the movie's awesome. It's epically awesome, and you really should watch it for yourself. This really has me curious how the Marvel Universe is going to look going forward because of how this movie wraps up. How are the Submariners going to interact with the rest of the MCU universe? I really enjoyed myself with this movie. I saw it with my friend Hakeem, and I'm going to be seeing it again. I can't wait to watch it again. Those are my thoughts on Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and live your imagination.